to prevent excessive clotting and the occlusion of major blood vessels and embolisms due to this clot migration. Now, this, these fibrins that were put into place in secondary hemostasis are redissolved and inhibitory factors are activated as soon as vessel repair is initiated. Eventually, the blood clots are reorganized and resorbed by a process that is known as fibrinolysis. In fibrinolysis, the clot is broken down by an enzyme which is known as plasmin. So you can see that this is the new sheriff in town. The plasmin is a serine protease that acts to dissolve the fibrin blood clots. Now plasmin is generated by the enzymatic catabolism of the inactive circulating precursor which is known as plasminogen. It is present in the plasma and it binds to the fibrin and is converted to plasmin by either by the factor 12 dependent pathway or by tissue plasminogen activator or TPA. Now this plasmin acts as a scissor and splits the fibrin meshwork into fibrinopeptides. And as you can see, fibrinolysis is taking place. Now you must also note that this plasmin in is inhibiting thrombin formation and the polymerization of fibrins to prevent further clot formation. Now this process is regulated by various activators and inhibitors. Now some of the activators that are activating the formation of plasminogen to plasmin, well in the blood we have the plasma calicrine and the factor 12. In the tissues we have this, this tissue plasminogen activator or TPA. Now calicrine also directly activates the plasminogen. And from urine, we have urokinase as an activator. Now, therapeutically speaking, streptokinase or urokinase are used to activate the plasminogen. These are useful for dissolving a thrombus located in a blood vessel. Now, as an inhibitor, you must note that the activated platelets or thrombocytes release plasminogen activator inhibitor or PAI1. This actually inhibits this formation of plasminogen to plasmin and thus temporarily block fibrinolysis. Now, antiplasmin is an endogenous inhibitor of fibrinolysis and plasmin itself is inactivated by antiplasmin. So, this is a flowchart detailing all the processes that are actually happening in fibrinolysis. Well, this brings us to the end of the story of hemostasis. So, we saw that due to vascular damage, the blood starts to ooze out of the vessel, which must be stopped. And stopping this leakage is known as hemostasis. Now, the immediate action was vasoconstriction, which was our first step to reduce the flow of blood. It is mainly done by autocoids, namely endothelin and thromboxane. Then we have the platelet plug formation occurring via three steps, platelet adhesion, activation, and aggregation. Thirdly, we have the blood clot formation, which involves the coagulation cascade that triggers the thrombin activation, which act as scissors to cut the fibrinogen to fibrins. Now, these fibrins then entrap the platelets and the blood vessels that are present in close proximity to stabilize this platelet plug. And lastly, we have fibrinolysis, which dissolves the clot after the repair process has occurred. We are the enzyme plasmin, and fibrin degradation takes place. So these are the four steps that we learned today. Firstly, vasoconstriction, platelet plug formation or primary hemostasis, blood clot formation or known as secondary hemostasis and fourth step is fibrinolysis. So we went into depth of all four of these steps, leaving no detail behind. I hope you learned something new today. If you have any type of queries, 
do let us know in the comments down below and stay tuned on scaria.com.